Bodu Audience Fano, welcome back to the practice run, your frontline pass to the heart of sports action, brought to you by 99 Dreams, inspiring others to chase their dreams. With your hosts, Tukoirangi and Awori. We're diving deep into the thrilling world of the NRL and Rugby League today, and who knows where the game will take us tomorrow. From the try line to the sideline, we've got you covered. Strap in as we tackle the big plays, the game-changing moments, and the stories that define legends. Whether you're a seasoned vet or this is your first hit up, the practice run is for everyone. Every run, every tackle, every win, experience the rush with us. With exclusive insights, couch analysis, and a touch of humour, the practice run is here to keep you entertained, informed, and part of our practice squad. Because here, every practice run takes us one step closer to glory. The practice squad, where every listener is MVP, powering our play every episode, every day. And you know these episodes wouldn't be possible without the help of 99 Dreams. So we want to give a huge shout out to 99 Dreams for powering our passion. And to all of you guys who stream this around the world, thank you all so much for help keeping the lights on and getting the show out there and, you know, getting people familiar with the practice run. So speaking of the practice run, let's find out what we've got for you today. Well, today, Farno, you know what it is. It's Tuesday, so we got to get into my GM mode. Today, it is my turn, and I've been tasked with turning the Newcastle Knights around. So there'll be a few twists and turns. Newcastle fans, feel free to roast me, because, hey, you might not like the direction of my team, but I don't like the direction of your jersey. Stick to the up and down stripes, Farno. No Vs, up and down, if you're Farno. <laughs> up and down. After that, we'll be giving our predictions on Game 3, the decider in there at the Cauldron Suncorp Stadium this Wednesday night. So be sure to tune in on Thursday's episode. We will give you the breakdown right after that game. So we, we get into the lab straight away and we record, give our thoughts and feelings on that game. And hey, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, Farno, that it's a game we can celebrate. I'll be devastated. I'll be absolutely devastated if we, if we don't come away with the lollies after this one. I'm going to be so devastated, man. It's going to be heartbreaking because, you know, it's been a roller coaster of the season. I'm already in the dumps. We're closer to Wooden Spoon than we are to the grand final. And it's, you know, and I guess that brings in the third part of our show where we recap the weekend's games and I'll be diving in and spraying the boys after that performance in the weekend. Hopefully your team did a lot better than mine and if you were a Dragons fan, well, car pie. I'm not too disappointed though because, you know, we, we kind of predicted it in the pre-show that the Broncos would most likely lose and continue this losing. I think it's been two months now we've been on this slide, so... Hope things turn around, but it's you know two months since we've we've succeeded. That's a long time. I think we've got the longest losing streak of the season now, eh? Because the Titans went five games, and then they won. I don't know, man. I'm just looking at your form. It reckons zero and four on the ladder. Now we're zero and six. We haven't won a game since Magic Round. Ouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crack up, eh? <laughs> um. So yeah, it. we'll dive into that and then we'll wrap up the show with our team of the week presented to you this week by W. Zalesniak Watches. Is it just W. Zalesniak or is it like Watson and Zalesniak? I don't know. I wouldn't man. have a clue. Probably I don't know, but w, check it out. I it's think. on Instagram. Yeah, check it out. It's on Instagram. It's on Instagram. But before we get into any of that, you know what time it is. Paper, scissors, rock. We do this every episode, baby. One, two, three, shoot. Losers lose, winners win, it's just paper, scissors, rock, paper, beats, rock, rock, beats, scissors, and scissors, beats, paper. I'm on a losing streak, but it's okay. Alrighty. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one, shoot. And up. Oh, yes! I was not confident with that either. Had to happen eventually. Gee, I threw that and I was like, bro, I should have went scissors. I should have went scissors. In my whole head, I was thinking, go scissors. But I threw my hand clenched and I was like, oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of just decided for whatever reason, scissors. I was like, I'm picking scissors and sticking to it. No <laughs> rhyme or thought went into it. You know, I didn't even think this guy normally goes rock. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so, today was a scissors day. Didn't go my way. 
<laughs> it'd be like that sometimes though. We just we just embrace it. We we really as long as we beat the guests that come on the show, that's all that matters. <laughs> how you been anyway? How you been before we dive into this week's show? How you been? Been up to? Uh yeah, not too bad. Work is work and then still training for this high rock standing gear up now. Not long to go. I think we're about a month out, so training isn't getting easier. The body's failing it too, but we can't afford a rest day. We got, we got no, we're out of time. So if the body's sore, it's just jumping on the bike zone two for an hour, and just hopefully keep it moving. But that's pretty much it, man. Haven't been up to much. I've uh, been watching the league and obviously been watching All Blacks and the other sports, but not much, man. It's pretty quiet over here, which is um, I'm enjoying it actually. I'm enjoying. The, the, the quietness of it and just you yeah, settling into a routine. But that's pretty much been me. What about you, bro? What's changed? Anything new with you? Hey, that's good to hear, brother. That's good to hear. As long as you're progressing, you're on track, man. And we're looking forward to seeing some updates. Maybe if you record some content for us, uh, send it on through. And we'll, <laughs> we'll stitch it into to some of these videos while you're away. Um, but no, for me, uh, I actually caught up with my cousins on Saturday night. It was nice, man. Uh, my older cousin reached out. He's like, yo, cousins, what have you been up to? Should we, should we link up? Uh, so, you know, when the older cousins pull that card, hey, you just got to pull up. You do what you do and just um, make it happen. So, no, that was awesome. And we just pretty much just sat around in the shed, watched the footy, uh, had a couple of bevies, and um, we, just, we just played categories for no <laughs> lie. Like two and a half hours straight, we were just Oh, categories going around. Ha oh, ha drink. Yeah, sweet as. And, oh no, nah, technically that's not so drink. So it was it was good, man. It was good for the whole order. And then I uh, had to get up for darts on Sunday. Uh, managed to pull away with third um, on Sunday. It was singles, so that was good. Oosh. That was good, man. It was a confidence builder. I could have got higher up, um, but yeah, I just couldn't finish on a couple of my games, which had. Uh, triples for show, doubles for dough, as they say in the world of darts. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, had a couple of 140s. Didn't get a 180, unfortunately. But yeah, hey, doesn't matter how much you score. If you can't finish it at the end of the day, it's all for nothing. But uh, look, looking ahead at the show we've got in store for you guys today. I hope you guys are enjoying this MyGM series. Like, I'm having fun. Uh, living in this hypothetical world of trades and of signings and um, just just messing with this this NRL world because you know outside of a video game none of this would actually happen. I'd love to get some of these guys on the show and just hear how they'd rebuild the team. You know, like could you imagine one day we get I don't know just just because I'm looking at yeah. the lights we get Dane Gagai on the show and we go Dane. I know these are all your boys. How would you rebuild this night? Like you you can look to bring in anyone. Let go of anyone. Who would you do and what would you do? Like, try to see if he'd let go of his mates for the lols. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, maybe one one day or one year we can, we can bring that in. But, uh, yeah, when we eventually get big enough to, I'll uh, start creating graphics and we can start putting, you know, um, some of these guys that we sign off of trades or that we have as new signings, we'll put them in, you know, that corresponding team's jumper and we'll be like yo just signed and we'll call it to the my gm league um you know brand and best to the brisbane broncos and we put them in a bronco jersey and have an imagery like that i reckon that'd be kind of cool and we'll put an overall rating next to it and then maybe we'll put a, a trade whether it's an a plus a c plus or a d plus maybe you guys at home rank our uh teams each week you give it a full grade uh, i'll get two to grade my team this week as i read through my list um and next week i'll, I'll grade two's team and yeah we'll give it a a b c d kind of ranking a plus b minus so newcastle knights knights fans i'm sorry i i don't really like have any particular love for your team outside of bradman best so for me Everyone was movable, and almost everyone moved. So, um, Knights fans, kia kaha. Uh, I apologize if this isn't to your liking. However, I will preface this, by the way. I feel like Knights are in like a, a little bit of salary cap turmoil. So there, there's a little bit of, uh, are you staying? Are you going? Because we see that in real life with um, one of the Saifidi twins being told he can look elsewhere. That whole cloud around Kalen Ponga, um, that Armstrong guy getting shifted over to Super League. So... Yeah, there, there, there's a uh, salary cap cloud 
over top of this. So, this is how it went down. My first move as the GM of the Newcastle Knights goes like this. I've got Kalen Ponga on the open market. We're gonna ship him around. So let me give a let me give a quick ring over to my GM over at the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. I heard they were looking for a strike fullback. So let's see if they'll take up an offer from us. So it went like this. This is how the conversation went. Ring ring. 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 Hello. Ring GM of uh, the Canary Bank Sound Bulldogs talking. Kia ora. Hey, two. It's an Aldi head. General manager of the Newcastle Knights. Look. I know I know I've heard you talking in the media lately that you guys are after a strike fullback. You think a strike fullback can push you guys to that next level. Now, we've got a strike fullback. Would you be keen to make an offer? Help me help you. Help me help you. What are we what are we talking about? What you're saying Cannon Pong's on the table. Is that what you're telling me? Well, for the right price, we, we, we could look to shift Caelan Pong and look. I know you know that we don't have the best salary cap. It's not in the best shape right now. I, I, I'm just going to be real with you. So I, I'm looking to move him. He's, he's $1.2 million contract. We need a hooker and we need some forwards because I'm about to make some moves and shakes, baby. So I know for you, Reed's probably off the list. And I understand that. I understand that. I'm not chasing Reed. I'm not chasing Reed. But I'm, I'm looking to see if you've got any anyone in the development league Anyone coming through that that's looking prime to to fill in if Reed wasn't there, and maybe throwing us a, a strong front rower. Hmm. Look, we do have. I don't know if you know the bro Bailey Hayward. He is kind of our backup uh, hooker. He's, he came through the system as a half, but we've transitioned him into a hooker. He was at the New South Wales Cup. He's currently in our squad, so if you're watching the Bulldogs play, you'd know who he is. He's kind of our ball playing lock. He's currently roaming between our starting lock when Kurt Mann's not there. And lately, even when Mann's been he's been starting. So he is a valuable piece to our future. But if you're talking Caelan Ponga here, a superstar of our game that could maybe take me over the top, might be pretty hard to say no. So Bailey Haywood is definitely the one that I'd be throwing if you didn't want uh, Reed, which sounds like you don't, which is good for me. And then forward, uh, I mean, we're currently already uh, already small in the forward pack. Uh, <laughs> Kalen Ponga, might just have to bite the bullet here. Look, uh, Josh Curran, he's just, I don't think I'm getting rid of him. He's... He's kind of been playing really, really well, and I'm glad that the Warriors got rid of him. Which leaves us with two options. We got Max King, and we got Sam Hughes. I think Sam Hughes is the younger of the two, and we just signed him to an extension, which kind of only leaves Max King as the odd one out. As good as he is, a solid play. He's going to bet it every year, come through that storm system, so he's from a winning system, and he's just been playing. He's going to bet it every year that he's been with us. So what's if his, you are what's looking, what's his work ethic like? What's his attitude towards playing footy like? That's he does We're all the for locker room leaders. He does all the hard work. You know, you're looking for just a blue collar player. That's him. He runs hard. He actually has an offload, which no one really oh. knows about. If you're a Bulldogs fan, fan, you kind of know about it. He used to always do this thing where he does the classic, I call it the Ruben Ricky, the Steve Price, you know how they would always turn you back before they get into the tackle? Yeah, He kind of yeah, does yeah. that, and he's always got that late offload. Great player. Uh, not a bad thing to say about him, mate. Would I say he's like the leader of a forward pack? I, I don't know if he's quite Batman, but, you know, if you're looking for a solid Robin, he's your guy. So I don't know if you're looking to make other moves in your forward pack. He's he's definitely part of that leadership group, and he'll be your Robin. I think a good a good two guy, like a like not a one not a one A or one B, but a solid like two way two B type player for four. That just does all the hard work, all the no nonsense type of stuff. 
So if you're looking for two players to throw your way in order for Kalen Ponga, those will be the two I'm throwing your way. How does that sound? Bailey Haywood and Max King for uh, Kalen Ponga. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, see, the reason I don't want to take any of your marquee players is because they come with a marquee price tag. And so these two are looking looking like affordable salary cap dumps that uh, make a decent, you know, contribution to my team. You know what? I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. You, you let them know. Uh, we need them in Newcastle by Saturday. They're not going to play this week, but we'll get them in for next week. But uh, I, I need them here by Saturday, man. Can they, can, can they do that? Kalen's already on the plane. He's already coming. Look. If, if you want a done deal, let's do this right now. I'll let full go, no. Pretty sure he'll give it the AOK okay because we're getting Kalen Ponga, a superstar. You are getting two quality pieces. It's going to sort out your cap. We might have cap issues now, but that's more of a Canterbury Bank sound Bulldogs problem <laughs> than a nice problem. And with full God, I think we can make it work. But yeah, man. All right, let, let's shake on that, brother. Let, let's shake on that. You're the first person I called, so thank you very much on that deal. Hmm. Kalen is now your, at your services. He will be at the Bulldogs office once he returns from Origin Camp. Thank you so much. Now, with that successful trade underway, we're now making large moves in this roster. We're now shifting Tyson Frizzell and Daniel Saifidi to the Bunnies in return for Cameron Murray, who was co-signed. And I'm not just saying that, that um, I get to tick it off. It was co-signed by two. He goes, you know what? Sure, let it happen. Um, it's fantasy, and, you know. Like it's it's why not do something crazy? So mm. yeah, and like if we keep all the same players at all the teams, what's the point of doing this? So yeah. why not shake things up? It's, it's fantasy. It's it's our NRL fantasy world. This is called my GM for a reason. Him and I are the GMs. <laughs> So now we've got one of those locker room leaders that we can have leading our forward pack. But I thought, we're not done yet. Let's try and shift up a little bit more of the salary cap. So you can kind of see where the thinking is. We're trying to dump two or more players and get one player in return, or we're going to try and release one marquee player and pick up a few smaller contracts. Kind of like Moneyball. As long as they can get on base and get you hits, that's all you kind of need. And that's where I was thinking with this next trade. So I got rid of Jacob Saifidi, Phoenix Crossland, Adam Elliott, and Jack Hetherington. I moved them all to the Sharks for Cam McInnes, Royce Hunt, and Oregon Kafusi. You're probably like, what the hell? Outside of McInnes, why'd you pick up Hunt and Kafusi? Look, Royce Hunt off the bench, huge impact forward. Uh, giving Max or Leo Thompson uh, a spell on the bench. He's just big-time money, man. He makes meters. If you've been watching Sharks, even though they've been losing, when Royce Hunt normally comes off the bench, bro, he powers through the middle. Uh, Kafusi, he's kind of just a journeyman we kind of just picked up, just, you know, uh, as they did in Moneyball. Oregon Kafusi, why'd you pick him up? Because he gets on base. That's all we need, you know. Simple meters through the middle. That's all we need. <clears throat> Uh, two new players I picked up from Queensland Cup. Uh, they're outside backs that we need to fill some of the spaces that I've freed up from just telling people you're free to look elsewhere, cousy. Uh, that first one is Manasse Kaho from the... Where is he from again? North Devils. So in 2024, in 14 appearances, he had 15 tries. And throughout his career, he's had 23 appearances and 23 tries. The bro knows how to score tries. And that's what we're looking for on this team, right? So we've got Manasi Kaho. He's starting out there on the wing. And our other one is Oblix Tafa. He's from the Dolphins Feeder Club. And he's a center slash winger. And same thing, man. He knows how to just score tries. And he looks electric. He looks fast. I see some of his highlights. So, um, yeah, we picked him up to fill up some of that space on the bench. So our bench now looks like this. We've got Fletcher Sharp at 14, uh, Oblix Tafa 15, Oregon Gafusi 16, Royce Hunt 17, and 18th man is Jaden Braley. Let's go and have a look at our starting lineup now. We're going to go from 13 through to 1, because I left that one spot vacant on purpose, just to sort of, because I haven't actually said who's replacing Caleb Ponga yet. 
and I've, I've got half my you know season members they're cancelling that membership because we ain't got no superstar anymore this club's in turmoil but come on man we've got a great forward pack how does this sound you know cam mckinnis at the lock position cameron murray kai pierce paul in the second row leo thompson max king are your front row forwards and we've got bailey hayward starting in that hooker position our halves pairing is jackson hastings and will price now there's a slight asterisk on jackson hastings or will price one of the two i'll get to that shortly my wings are Manasseh Kaho and Greek Maju, and my centers are Bradman Best and Dan Gagai. No need to change what is already working. Um, we'll probably throw the captaincy on Gags and McInnes. They co-captain together, and we'll put Murray vice-captain. So, my big splash. So, I've freed up a hell of a lot of salary cap right now. Uh, I managed to get ourselves in, I think, a surplus of one8 million in salary cap according to chat gpt uh with their um what is it the salary cap of like three point something million that we've um hypothesized for each team it's either 2.8 mm. or 3.2 something like that but that was our hypothetical salary cap well i've managed to free up some some salary space and i've i've i'm calling this a coup because this man is currently stuck behind a perennial fullback at the moment. And barring injury, he may just be a fringe guy that comes in for injury placement throughout his career. He is too good not to be um, an all-black. And he had a great season this season with the Hurricanes. I've thrown $750,000 to Ruben Love to draw him over to the NRL. We've got him at fullback. However, if, if obviously he doesn't transition too well um, in the preseason, we're going to put him back into reserve grade, let him um, build his craft at either fullback or in the halves. And that's why I said Jackson Hastings or Will Price, if one of them aren't performing, we'll just shift Ruben into the halves. He can kind of have that playmaking ability that he plays fly half, similar, similar. Um, and then we'll move Fletcher Sharp into that fullback role. So we've got we've got backups there to cover but that's i think is our big marquee signing he, he's an all black in the making and again in the real world he probably never takes that deal um mm -hmm. he'll probably want to fulfill his dream of being you know a full-time all black but uh this is fantasy land and in fantasy land uh anything can happen and i thought you know what let's be the first to take a union boy and let's be the first to try and take our future all black off the market and bring them in so yeah we've got ruben love Manasseh Kahul, Bradman Best, Dane Gagai, Greg Maju, Will Price, Jackson Hastings, Max King, Bailey Hayward, Leo Thompson, Kai Pierce Paul, Cameron Murray, and Cam McInnes. Now, I thought this Knights would probably just be a rebuild team that kind of just floats around the middle. I think if Ruben Love can find his feet in this team and in the NRL pretty quickly, I think they could compete for the eight. I think they could compete for the eight. They might be like, you know, seven eight nine ten around there in their first season but i think this team's got the goods man we've got some fast play the ball off of murray you've got hard cam mckinnis in the middle he's just you know he's, he's just a tough man tough as nails gets the job done makes those tackles bailey hayward who's also a ball playing lock and kind of he, he offers something different at that hooking position i think he'll be a mm. defensive stalwart we'll kind of build him up to be that reese robson style um just you know hearty in the middle um and then off the bench, you know, we've got a lot of firepower and Royce Hunt, Oregon Kafusi, so some big boppers coming in off the bench. We may lack depth once our, you know, starting 18 get injured, but uh, that's all good. That's something to worry about when we cross that bridge. And, you know, uh, at least we'll only miss, what, Cam Murray during origin period, maybe Gay Guy and Best. So there's not too many, and that's why i got Oblix, Oblix Tafa is to sort of offer a little bit of aid during that origin period. At least we know we're not going to lose Ruben Love like we would uh, lose Caelan Ponga. So what are, what are you th what's, what's your thoughts on my team, bro? Any questions, any parts around you know, my selections or any comments? What would you have done different? Oh, look, I mean, you're certainly living in a fantasy land with all of these moves, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, giving up KP, yeah, I mean, you're losing half your memberships and half your views, but hey, you know, tough calls got to be made. And you replace him straight up with Cam Murray. What a move. 
uh, didn't <laughs> see that one coming, but you know, you pulled it off, and um, yeah, man, great leader, you know, great player. And if you're going to replace, and if you're going to replace Cannon Ponga, Cameron Murray isn't a bad choice. So obviously, that's clearly what I think is your best move is getting a leader in there, new captain, new voice. You know, someone that can lead this team, and clearly you're going in a different direction, right? And fair enough. If you're going in a different direction, change has got to be made, mate. I do like how you switched out pretty much your Ford pack for the Sharks. Bit of a sly move, but a good one. You know, <laughs> you got McInnes again, and Royce Hunt, big fan. I was, I was looking at him as one of the potentials. The Ruben Love move, yep. You're not lying. I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> uh, did not even look that way. <laughs> but hey great move i mean if it comes off that's i think cameron murray is like the most important signing you did but the ruben love move could be the move that swings it you know look i don't know where he's going to end up but it seems like you've kind of went for like a few decent hitters you know then kind of we're pretty much swinging with ruben love and that's going to be the one that swings it either way. If it's a, if it's a killer hit and it lands, then all we'll user on. If it doesn't, and it doesn't quite translate. Then I don't know, you know. But it looks like you're going to live and die with that movement, Cameron. Yeah. yeah, I mean the Cameron Murray signing, any coach would want him. You know, Cameron McInnes, great signing. So your Ford pack's definitely solid. You know, I'm surprised you didn't go for like a uh, more. Maybe like established half. You know, I thought you might have switched out either Hastings or Will Price. I think that might be one area that you could maybe come to regret. Yeah. So yeah, if I there's one I thing I had a the... I had to critique, it would be it would be the half situation. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I thought about that too, but I thought the only way I'd be able to get a decent half is if Ponga goes for that half. But I kind of wanted to build a forward pack that we can get get us on the front foot so that it sort of takes a little bit of the the sting away from Ruben Love. You know, it, it, it adds a bit of a security blanket to him because if the forwards can get moving forward pretty quickly, then there's a lot of pressure on the opposing defense to make sure that they're covering those forwards and that kind of lets him do a little bit more out the back or a little bit less if he doesn't perform as well. Uh, and defensively, there won't be, you know, too much responsibility on him. We know a lot of these forwards can make their tackles or you're not going to get stranded on an island and, you know, getting split um, all the time. So that's why I went that route. I do, yeah, I do know that that's something that would have needed to be stitched up. But um, look, if one of them aren't performing and Ruben Love turns out to be that guy, because I'm pretty sure he'll probably be our goal kicker moving forward. Um, seen him kick plenty of times for the Hurricanes, pretty consistent. So would possibly move him into that seven or six and um will or hastings whichever one isn't performing will be dropped down and fletcher sharp takes that fullback spot i like it uh was i giving you a grade overall yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so this is an overall team grade i like to be honest man overall team grade i'd say you're looking at easily like a b plus a minus it really depends on ruben love yeah yeah knights fans are not Could gonna love the fact yeah knights fans are not gonna love the fact that you just gave up kalen ponga for pretty much not much not happy they're not happy about that but can't knock hey, you but for look cameron at the rest murray. of the team yeah can't knock you for cameron murray you got a solid forward pack it's all gonna rely on ruben love so right now b plus a minus, but in a year, if it doesn't work and Ruben Love isn't the guy, yeah, this shoots all the way down to a. <laughs> this goes all the way down to like a D minus, or maybe that's just a straight failed. Yeah. But hey, look, you know, you yeah. had to swing, and boy, did you swing big. Hey, man, we, we did just change the identity of this team. I, I feel like I needed to give it my own personal flavor. I don't like the mm. direction we're headed. We haven't achieved anything. We've made finals, but we haven't gone further than that. When was the last time you saw a Newcastle Knights grand final? Oh, the eighth was a new team. Exactly. So, you know, this might not make the grand final this year, but we, we've, we've built a foundation now. We've got a great forward pack. That, that's a platform that we've built behind. Um, you know, hey, look, if in the next year or two, 
there's a, a half that wants to join the club that you know sees the success uh, maybe another all black comes over who knows but all i know is we're, we're really riding on uh ruben love in order for me to keep my job here in newcastle <laughs> <laughs> so uh ruben look brother anything you need man come see me come to my office my my gm door is always open to you if you need if you need more visits with the whanau hide in my if we need to play both our uh games versus the warriors in auckland then so be it we'll we'll, we'll make that shift for you hey we'll even shift that game to wellington you know you know the knights we played in wellington maybe we can make that a an, a recurring theme we'll just give up our home game to see you play there in wellington if that makes it more comfortable for you we'll we'll, we'll go that route but uh from the Bulldogs general manager, you now must try to rebuild South Sydney Rabbitohs. <laughs> You're the one that let the trade come through, so you can you can deal with the South fans. Bro, they all want me out the door. I just got rid of Cameron Murray. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, now I gotta replace him. Shit. Hey man, oh. at least you've got uh Tyson Frizzell and Daniel Saifidi to start Fuck with. Hell. So do do make sure that you note that, and you no longer have um, Damien Cook. Oh yeah, I don't got Cook as well. Ah, Cook is trash anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah. so Cook's at yeah, the man. Dragons. Yeah, so, Dragons. Um, before we get started, do you have any thoughts about what you're going to do with this team? Before we just 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 a quick maybe a couple of words on what you're thinking about this team straight off. Uh, first things first, we got a good start because Wayne Bennett is our coach, so it's a great start. Yeah, so we're solid yeah, at the true. top. Uh, looking at this Lewis Dodd guy, the one we co- got coming over to play seven. Yeah, we might have to just renege on that contract. You know how NRL contracts work, man. <laughs> you know those can just. So, because uh, I'm liking how these halves are going at the moment, so I think they might stay the same. We'll be looking to make a change. Obviously, we've got to replace Cameron Murray. Uh, luckily, we've got a few injured players that are coming back next year. But let's see if we can make a splash. If we can get it done, we might have to send one of our big players out. But I'm looking for a number nine, and I think I might have my eye on one. Stay all tuned. Right, all right, see you all next right. week. Here we go, Fanos. And there it is. Next week, uh, if you're a South Sydney Rabbitohs fan, tune on back for that. If you're a Newcastle Knights fan and you didn't like uh, how I structured your team, get at me in the comments, man. Let us know how you feel. Um, and if you have any advice for two as a South Sydney Rabbitohs fan for next week, leave them in the comments. If you, you know, like, it, like we said, it's fantasy land. If you want to see Reese Walsh at the Bunnies, let him know. He can't make it happen if he doesn't know what you guys want. So, Leave your comments, who you want, down below, and we'll see what we can do. But I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this week's segment of My GM Mode. Look at ahead now. Uh, tomorrow night, the uh, Queensland Maroons host the New South Wales Blues in the Decider Game 3. And we're set for a big one. There's been a lot of war of words between the two teams, man. And it's Queensland are ready to step up. They're looking to go out and you know, put big hits on people. And New South Wales are looking to just carry on doing what they did in the last game. You know one difference, one point of difference, I think, is? What? No matter how hard you hit Dylan Edwards, within, you know, legality of the game, without injuring him, he's still going to get back up and play that ball and not be faced. Mm. Like, Mm -hmm. no matter how big of a hit, like the hits that they put on Reese Walsh in game two, you know, those hits on Dylan Edwards... It doesn't phase him. He just gets up, plays the ball, and like nods back, and he he wants to run it back again. Like he's just got that dog in him. Like if you took an X ray of him, he'd have a pit bull in his chest. He got that dog in him, man. <laughs> 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 oh man, I, I'm just looking forward to this battle. Eh? Like, who do you think has the best back five? We talked about this in the last game, but like, who do you think has the best back five? Queensland back five or New South Wales back five for like? Obviously, the flair, the the defense, the the what? What do you think? Who has the X factor as a full group of five? Depends on what you're looking for. If we're talking X factor, I'm gonna have to give it to the Maroons, Reese Welsh, Cobo, like a hammer. He's just like just been killing it at Origin level, and he's partnered up with someone else who we know. Go see another level at Origin with Dan Gagai. 
you know, so I'm looking at those two, Reese Welsh, Cobo. But it's the X factor of them and what they can bring in their individual brilliance against mm. a back five that just know how to get it done. Dylan Edwards, big meter gainer, you know what I mean? That meter eater. Brian Toto, that second run off the back. Zach Lomax. You know what I mean? So it's the it's the X Factor of the Moran against how good of a start like this back five's gonna get for New South Wales. Cause we've seen it at club level, right? Dylan Edwards, Brian Toto, uh, Taruva, and how great of a start they get for their team, and it just gets the ball rolling. And we've seen it now, right, in that first, uh, second game, and I think it's going to be the same for this third game. Of those three, their back three can get it going, and then got Bradman Bess and the X-Factor of Critter. I think overall I'd give the advantage to New South Wales, just more because I think we kind of know what to expect for them. We know Dylan Edwards is going to get close to 200 metres. We know Toto is going to get probably over 200 metres. Zach Lomax. I mean, you've heard his name the whole year. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like The whole year has been a conversation with Toto as who's the best winger. You know, it's just crazy. Critter, he's up there for being the best signing of the year, the best captain. You know, like he's made a difference at the Bulldogs, Bradman, Bess. You know, you took him out of me every other week. You know what I mean? So <laughs> overall, I would give the advantage to New South Wales. But you can never be sure when you've got someone like Reese Welsh, someone Cobo, you know, the Hammer, Valentine Holmes. You know, he's still solid. Dan Gagai. To be honest, man, a lot of those Knights games that I've watched, Dan Gagai is just still got it. Like, honestly, yeah. he's still got it. And if we're getting, like, Maroon's Dan guy, yeah, that's something to be worried about. Because, you know, there's certain players, right, that just play so much better in certain roles. Oh, like, yeah. I think we have talked about it before. Like, we talked about, you know, Ma'ononu, how he's a pretty average guy when he was in Super <laughs> Rugby. But you get him to the All Blacks, he's the best number 12 of all time. You know what I mean? So certain players in certain positions are just killer. In NBA talks, it's always playoff Rondo. Rondo, regular season, trash. Get him in the playoffs, he's like just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. So certain players in certain roles just go to another level, and he's one of them, and we have to be worried about it. If we're not worried about Dan Gagai, and we just think he's just over the hill, not about it, he's going to shock us. And I'm really looking forward to that battle I'm hoping that they end up guarding each other, gay guy against best. I think that's one thing I want to see. <laughs> you know, they took a battle all the time, right? Made it state against state, made against mate. But really, do you see, unless it's in the forward packs where they're actually guarding each other? So it's be one of those rare occasions where same position, you know, let them guard each other, man. And I think they will, because I'm pretty sure you need Critter on Hammer. That's where I, th yeah, I think well, Critter has to guard Hammer. Yeah. Does yeah? Wow, that's that's a tough. Like both of those guys need locking up. Ah, oh, yeah, man, it's gonna be tough. It, it really is. Like I think the battle of this back five is confidence versus X factor. New South Wales have all the confidence, and they should have all the confidence. I think they're out. Like their back five outdueled them both games. It was just that um, the Maroons were able to exploit the the one man down the 12 yeah. versus 13 in game one but i think in all honesty new south wales back five outdueled um queensland back five in both those games combined uh i was just looking through here how many other players are actually teammates that that are going head to head this weekend and we're gonna well, hopefully we get to see cape will take on mitchy barnett uh wa versus wa we get to see reese and cotter mm -hmm go up against each other. Obviously, Haas versus Carrigan and Walsh and Cobo. Um, and then we've got Lenu and Watson going up against Lindsay Collins and then Lomax and Hunt. But you'll, you'll really see Lomax and Hunt going at it because they they're, they're not in a uh, position close enough to get at each other unless sort of Lomax makes that break up through the middle. I'm excited for this game. I'm really excited for this game. Um, that was another thing that I was looking forward to seeing. 
who do you think um, has that that desire to want to get it more? Do you think Queensland want to just you know maintain that dominance and keep that fortress feeling alive in Queensland, or do you think the Blues, like I heard um, Mitchy Pearce say, just want to have that hanging up in the man cave? You know, I got that game three win in Queensland as a New South Welshman. You know, hang that picture up of just you know scoring that try or getting that big hit and you know that game changing that momentum swinging hit that knocks the ball forward that you get the ball back enemy territory kick to touch and now we're in attacking position you know like those kind of images that that are lasting they're similar to you know the gordon tellis um ragdoll to the sideline you know that's iconic um some of those Billy Slater runs where yep. he just carves up the defense. That's iconic. GI's big fin break through and just barnstorms down the down the field. Like those kind of iconic images. You know, you want to be a part of a New South Wales team that can have an iconic image like that, but tie it to a game three victory in Queensland. Or, you know, hold it down for them Queenslanders. Because, you know, we always hear Queenslander. We just get origin, you know. So who do you think's got more on the line? That is a really tough question to answer. And this might be the boring answer, but they kind of both do in different ways. You got the Maroons and Billy Slater, they're going for a three peat. They're at home. They just come off a game where they got smoked. If you don't if you're not ready to die for your state after what happened in game two and where you're about to play then you shouldn't be selected. Just go home. All right? And then you got New South Wales coming off that dominant victory, which I think might actually be a curse for this game. But then you're going into the fire, right? You're going to the to the Dragons pit. Game three at Suncorp, right? Yeah. I mean, the stuff, things, you know, what, legends are made of. If you want to make your name in the Origin of Arena and you're a New South Wales player, this is where you get it done. This is where you put your name up in the, you know, in the what, upper echelons of folklore when it comes to State of Origin. Game three, one or you're going into the cauldron. Can you pull it out? You know, and can you be that guy that pretty much wins it? Everyone always gives Ben Hunt shit about what happened in 2015, you know. <laughs> and to be honest, his vindicating moment was last season when he intercepted that kick from Nathan Cleary. That sealed the deal. That won in that series, you know. No one really brings it up anymore. And when they do, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I remember that. You know? <laughs> but it took him that long, you know, to come back because he was always going to be remembered for that until he did that moment. Game three last year, won it, you know, so it can turn people's perception of you. Can I think of one player who will come up with the moment, though? I'm not too sure. All I know is that there's a player in New South Wales who played four straight grand finals and scored in every single one of those finals. And in every game so far, we've played Origin, he just has moments. Cometh the man, cometh the hour. He might not score the winning try, or even score a try, but he has moments that swing games. So I'm going to go out with a bold prediction and say Stephen Critter. Oh, Crichton, the captain of the Bankstown Bulldogs. He could be up for a big one here, and I think he could have that moment. And if he does, it's going to put him in a whole new light, I think. I think if he comes out and does something that Critter does, I don't know whether it's... Early ball gets on the outside of the hammer, gives him a fan, draws the winger and flick out the back. Or it's intercept try because he's not for intercepts. Or it's a game, it's a try saving tackle. I just feel he's got moments in him. And that moment could play a pivotal role in who decides this game. And if he's at the center of it, we could be looking at, I don't know. Just the origin moment that lives on uh, for time. And I hope it's him. Because if it is, then it must mean that the Blues are winning. Which is always <laughs> good. Uh, so yeah, man. They both got reasons to win it. They both got reasons to want to play. And if you don't want to play, if you think you're not ready for it, then get the fuck 
fuck off. Get someone <laughs> else away. You know, you ain't ready for it. You're either made for the moment or you're not. You know, yeah. unfortunately, there will be a player who, you know, when the shine, when the light shines the brightest, it's just a little bit too bright. You know what I mean? And they can't yeah. quite handle it. Unfortunately, that is going to be someone. And I hope it's not someone in blue. And I hope it's someone in the Maroons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, that's kind of all I've got on that in that situation. Yeah, look, uh, I'll, I'll add, I'll add on this one, one part as well. Like you talk about who's going to be having that magical moment. Talk to me about who you think might have that magical uh, mishap. <sighs> now, I, I know a guy on that field. Uh, he's done my head in plenty of years. Um, <laughs> do we think he's going to have a magical mishap? Like as, as phenomenal as he is, you know, he's got a great strike rate. Um, he is electric. He's fast. He's he's everything you need out there on the wing. But on the wing, I just I, I think it's his weakest position. In the centre, he makes a lot more grounded choices, especially on defence. But on the wing, he always shoots up early. Always comes in off the line real quick. Um, and sort of leaves the centres to come and scramble. Now, if he's paired with Dane on that wing, and he shoots in, and it's Crichton, and he steps in and then boosts a bit and flicks it out wide to Lomax, I don't think Gagai catches Lomax in that scenario, man. Because, like, there's a bit of a gap, and we know Gagai, Gagai ain't, ain't, ain't as speedy or he doesn't have that acceleration he used to. He still was powerful and he can cover that distance, but I just think, you know, those kind of moments I think is, is where someone needs to really keep his head and, you know, make sure that he covers man-man properly. Mm. Yes. Look, to be honest here, you bring up good points with Cobo, right? He's is Mr. Hit or Miss. And when he misses, it's spectacular. And when he hits, it is also spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> Not too sure, eh? Like, all these players are quite safe. You know what I mean? If, if that even makes sense. Kind of go down and you're like, oh, I don't know who's going to have that moment. It might be someone that, like, loses their head is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it might be a forward that comes up with a play that's Maybe just pushes it too far, like something that's not needed and gives it a go and it just doesn't turn out. Mm, Who that player yeah, is, yeah. though? Not really sure. Well, I'm pretty sure it won't be Jake Javorovic because I'm almost <laughs> certain he's only going to play the first 10 minutes before he's off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, even there, he ain't the most fiery of players. <laughs> he's more likely to give you a hug. <laughs> he's just a nice dude. Telling you what, man, it could be a, it could be a forward that gets just absolutely smacked. Something that like jolts the ball like off the back fence. Martin. Really, yeah. I reckon he's he's, he's their number one target. Liam could Martin, be him, he's man. Been our pace setter. You know? He's been our pace setter, man. Uh, it could be. He does get a bit hot-headed sometimes, and if you get him right, you know, he can come up with a mistake. It's just will he come up with a mistake at the key moment? I don't know. But I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, because I'm looking at these Queensland forwards, and I'm like, man, you, you don't really get under their skin too much. Uh, like, they're, they're pretty professional, these blokes. Like, you're uh, looking at their, what, 8 through to 17... And I'm just thinking, nah, if anyone's losing their shit, it's probably Cherry Evans who just sprays someone after they, Ooh. like, knock the ball forward. And then in comes freaking Martin grabbing Cherry because he's just spraying someone for knocking the ball on or whatever. I might have an answer. I don't know where this answer come from, but might be dead. And... Oh, Tommy I'm thinking D. dead. Oh, I remember though, Dearden, when he made his origin debut, was game three and at the cider, and he played mean. But he didn't have the greatest game two. They kind of, he got exposed a bit in game two. Or well, even that shot that he took from Suali before um, Suali went off when he ran at him. Mm, yeah. He, he hasn't actually I had think, a great yeah. origin, period. 
Yeah, this series hasn't been his best. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of the one that that I could think could have, have a shocker. Because which side is he on? Who's his side? Is it him, Hammer, and Holmes, eh? Yeah. Yeah. See, if I'm New South, that's the side I'll be attacking. I think it was the side they attacked. We'll see what I mean. That's Toto and it. it was Latrell last game. It was Toto and Trowell on that Holmes dead. And, oh, that's right, because it was Trowell one-on-one with yeah. Holmes, eh, and he just destroyed him. Yeah, and I think it was Coates on that edge. Or was it Talangi? Oh, yeah. Because different Either wingers way. in game two. Yeah, it was. They're both new wingers. Yeah. Well, Holmes just shifted one out. Hammer, I think, just moved over. Uh, Gay Guy and Cobo are new. They're a new pairing. Yeah. I guess that's smart, too. You pair the old head with the young bull, and you yep. just know that's going to work. But, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be interesting. But that's what I'd be thinking. Yeah, I'd be going attack dead and attack that side. See if we have an advantage there. And go from there, man. Hard. To be honest, I wouldn't be as confident if Queensland had a healthy Munster and a healthy Tino Faso or Muyali. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tino. I think those two, big game changers for Queensland. Like just the physicality and the intensity that Tino brings. New South Wales would struggle to match that. Uh, and just, you know, the craftiness and, and the ability that Munster has to get under your skin, second to none. Second to none, man. He's that guy that can rock you up, kick you in the head a little bit. Yeah. He's the one that, if he was in the team, I'd be like, ah, shit. Yeah. Not him. Not Munster. Yep. And that's he even just, if yeah. we had Cleary, I'd still be like, ah, Fuck, oh, I'm not I'm not happy about Munster. Yeah. You just don't know what he's gonna do. Unpredictable. Big ball money. Just Yeah. Boy, I'm glad he's not there. A hundred, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why I'm like, yo, this is this is our chance. We could we could win it yep. this year. This is we it. Could win it this this year. is so, it. Um, you know, what is it what is it? Make hay while the sun shines, they say, and you know, when when um given opportunities as big as this I think we've got the team to do it this year. You know, I really do think we've got the team to do it. Just, yeah. Um, no hate on Jake. I just wished Mitchie Barnett was that starting prop um, to bring it off the back fence to set the platter, per se. <laughs> um, let's just hope we're not kicking first. Hopefully we, we win the toss and we elect to kick because we want to bring the intensity. We don't want the intensity brought to us. We want to bring it. We want to set the platform. We want to make them Bro. kick early on fourth. Which origin was it? Was it last year or the year before where it was just carnage in that first 10 minutes where like three players got sent like sent off for HIAs? Like Cameron uh, Murray got like knocked out. I think Isaiah Yo got knocked out. I think someone from Queensland got knocked out. It was just... It was yeah, like, what is happening? Like, come on. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Might have been two years ago. It was like... Bro, it was just something else. Brutal. Brutal. I see in an article just as I'm um, scrolling. I'm just actually scrolling news sites at the moment just to find any new articles that are popping up around Origin. Uh, mm-hmm. Daily Cherry Evans has been asked about his retirement. That's so rude, eh? Like, bro, gearing up for Game 3, probably one of the biggest deciders in, like, recent history. And they're like, oh, bro, when are you going to retire? He's like, look, I'll, I'll make a promise about my retirement in the coming weeks. He goes, I just think now isn't the right time. And I, I totally agree with him. Now is not the time to be thinking about retirement because you need to think you can play on for another six years. You need to have that mentality that you're still that young bull that can carry on playing, cuz. Because uh, if you're thinking, okay, now is the time to retire, my cuz, get off the field and get that jumper to someone else, man. <laughs> so I'm um, glad he's not even thinking about retirement lucky for you Queenslanders you know his head is in the game um because we we all know how important that was if you watch high school musical you've got to get you get you get get your head in the game speaking of getting your head in the game Thursday night um is this you or me 
This is you, Thursday night. Uh, KO Stadium, Redcliffe, the Dolphins hosted the Bunnies. Let's get your quick breakdown on that game. Yes, actually, this was the game. And Thursday night, uh, always known on this podcast, is Thursday night, bangers. bangers. And this game lived up to the hype. You had the Rabbitohs coming in on a five-game win streak. This was, of course, known as the Bennett Bowl, as Wayne Bennett, the current <laughs> coach of the Dolphins, going up against the team, well, his former team, and the team he's going to be coaching next year so there were definitely storylines going into it and man it was quite back and forth eh you know i mean jack bostock he's actually quite good eh jack oh, yeah, bostock he's, he's oh, um like... i'd never heard of him till this year and all of a sudden I'm like, this guy yeah, you're solid you know dark horse that one uh opens up the scoring you know and then Try Gray with the try, no try, penalty try. <laughs> <laughs> we just call him Try Gray. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, you go up to the bunker and I think everyone knew once we went up there it was going to be a penalty try, but did it really affect him? Like, how can you <laughs> say that someone holding me, right, is the reason why I dropped the ball? Like, I don't know. I mean, good luck with the bunker, man. It's not the first time they've done something <laughs> like that. It's not the last time. This guy, Tavita Pangai Jr., who I cannot stand. But for some reason, when he's coached by Wayne Bennett, he just does things. His first 20 minutes was just dominant, you know? Yeah, man. And he has moments like these, which is why he pisses so many people off. Because, like, why can't you just do that every time, you know? Like, we've seen it time and time again. Yeah. He's someone who's kind of has, like, put, like a lot of potential, a lot of X factor. If he could just harness it, boy, he'd be a great player. And I think everyone tries to harness it too much. Where I think Wayne <laughs> Smith um, is kind of a, oh, Wayne, you know, Bennett is a coach that kind of went the other way. He kind of leans into it, you know? Like, yeah, man, do you. If you're going to offload it, offload it. Just whatever you do, do it at 100%. Jacob Gagai obviously answers with his try. He'll be fine with. Great player again. But, um, look, this game really came down to, if we're being critical here, came down to the kicking. All right, Latrell Mitchell's normally the kicker for the Rabbitohs. He wasn't there. Because both teams scored six tries. But one kicker, Jermaine Asako, who I genuinely believe is one of the best goal kickers in the comp, if not the best. Like he's been doing this for years, you know, and you would know that, you know, and he can get it from both sides, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's just, he is a master when it comes to kicking. Six of six. Cody Walker. He, he made one, <laughs> one kick. Tani Milne ended up making a second kick. As a team, the Rabbitohs, two of six. Game, set, match, right there. Yeah. Right there. But, look, the Dolphins did deserve it. They played really well. They got off with the bro. Uh, what's his name? Kenny Bromwich, game 250. So, well done, well done to them. I did pick the Rabbitohs to win it. I thought they could pull it off. And they did. I told you. Six tries. The other team scored six tries. It's just one team made all their kicks the others didn't you know so by full credit to the <laughs> dolphins i think the rabbitos will bounce back from the stry gray looks like a player alex johnson got himself a double he's itching close to the 200 tries now you know gag i got a hat trick so their wingers are scoring man wingers are scoring just the kicker need to be kicking you know yeah and if you're kicking kicking well shit it's gonna make it that much harder but that's all I've got from this game. Good win to the Dolphins. Rabbitoh should bounce back. But now, because of that loss, it does make it harder for them to get into the eighth. I'm starting to think they might end up being ninth. <laughs> uh, that's all I got, man. If you don't got anything else, you feel free to move on to the next game or do your yeah, thing. No, real, quick, real quick, I'll just touch on this. Like This was a game, a must win for Wayne Bennett and his Dolphins to prove to the haters that he's not one foot out, um, one foot in at the Bunnies. You know, he, he's actually all in for the Dolphins this season. It's just been a tough couple of weeks for them. And what a way to bounce back. Killed my multi, though. They, they let the Bunnies get within uh, 10.5. Thank you very much. Um, 
Man, I want multis always die on the Thursday night. And I'm so mad that this round there is no Thursday night banger. Instead, we get the stupid triple header on Sunday. I have no joy in that triple header on Sunday. Like, I hope their viewership numbers go down in that third and second game just to prove to the NRL that, th uh, that Thursday nights are more profitable in viewership than a damn Sunday. Anyway, yeah, huge game for Jai Gray. Um, he, he looks the part in that fullback spot. I just, I personally want to see him stay there and see them shift Trail for a little bit and just give Trail the permission to roam, like just do the Trail things. Um, Bostock had a great game. Herbie had a great game, and you know, I'm so mad. We could have used the Tavita Pengai Jr. on the Broncos for the most half of the season because our forwards ain't doing shit. So I'm mad. I'm <laughs> mad, but well done, Dolphins. Like, I, I was glad I tipped you guys in the um, preview show. The team I didn't tip in the preview show uh, lost. Wait, no, the team I didn't tip in the preview show won, sorry, 58-6 at points bet stadium in sydney i tipped the tigers because i thought you know what they beat them in one game and now they don't have nico hines surely they can get up i was wrong i was really <laughs> wrong i was so wrong like ronaldo mulitalo scored three times wrong but i will say this this is what i was right about though is i feel like a lot of the tigers success comes when ronaldo mulitalo has great games we said this earlier in the season when he was scoring, like, he went on that doubles, um, just try fest. He was scoring doubles almost every game. He was allergic to just getting one try on its own. Here he goes and scores um, three tries. But this was just a collective effort um, from the Sharks. They just, yeah, they just kept pounding and pounding these Tigers. This would have been a great Thursday night banger too. This game just, I don't know what it is. It's them throwback jerseys, man. I, I, we were talking about this off show. Not too many teams that have brought out their debut, sorry, their, their throwback jerseys have lost the season. The Broncos got up over the Cowboys, the Bulldogs got up over the Roosters, the Warriors got up over the Broncos, Sharks up over the Tigers, to name a few. I need to double check that Parramatta one, but I'm pretty sure they won in that Parramatta throwback jersey. The first time, the first time it comes out. The second, third time, doesn't really matter. Uh, no one cares anymore. Um, if you do lose in it, well, too bad. You won the first time. That's all that matters um but yeah this was just an out and out hiding it really showcased uh, a lot of the strengths in the sharks team that we did witness earlier on in the season but again it comes at the expense of the tigers who are you know bottom dwellers um they're reigning defending wooden spooners they are two time two time wooden spooners they, they're running their back to back and looking at a back to back to back um so you know as great as 58 points is on the tigers it's also the tigers and you know it's kind of just a, a working buy around i'm kind of um i don't know where the tigers go from here man they're, they're getting picked apart for the past couple of weeks now they, they had that big win the other week but those wins have you know been fair and few so when do the tigers look to sort of rebuild that roster and what does that look like who who me who moves on uh, is Luai enough to turn this club around? I think he's enough to get them a couple more wins. I don't know if he's enough to boost them that high up the ladder that they're now in the eight all of a sudden. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't I don't know where the Tigers go. All I know is this is a positive sign for the Sharks, that they can still get that ball rolling and they can still hold their place in the top eight for when Nico does come back. And I think, like you said in the group chat, man, like this break for Nico will be a good break. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully he's able to spend a couple of days away from footy and just, you know, blank out all the haters. Um, I thought maybe even shifting him into the six, potentially, and leaving Trindle in the seven. Just see what that looks like. I don't know. It was just food for thought because I just thought that, you know, Trindle looked great in that seven jersey. Similar conundrum to what the Warriors have going on with Tamari Martin. You know, he looks great in that seven jersey. Put him back in the six and, you know, he, he's kind of a shell of himself having to play second fiddle to... Um, Sean Johnson, who also has a podcast that's dropping on Wednesday or Thursday, I think. Him and Brooke are doing one, and Brooke just threw out the the the, the realist question. He just said to him straight up, "Are you retiring next year or what? What are we doing? Running it back or what?" And he's like, "Oh, well, he's trying to dance around it." And Brooke's like, "Well, I thought that was the whole reason we made this podcast." So, tune into that. I uh, can't remember what it's called, 
Um, but yeah, anyway, back to this. I just think, yeah, look, Sharks putting themselves in good stead. I like that throwback jersey, man. I'm thinking about copping one myself. I really like it. So, uh, all right, you might see me in a Shark jersey just because I, I just <laughs> like the way it looks, man. I just like the way it looks. I'm not, I'm not jumping on the Shark bandwagon. I'm not going to follow their team. I just like the look of it. Kind of help me that I like the look. I like kind of. I like these throwback jerseys that are being modernized because the material is yep. nicer. Like I hate the yeah, '95 yeah. jersey; it's just too heavy, eh? Bro, actually, while we're on a topic of of um heritage tops, I'm pretty sure the Bulldogs one from the '04 when because obviously the first lot sold out real quick, and then I ended up missing the second lot. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure the second lot has just... Nah, nah, nah. They weren't doing a third. They were saying... But the second one has just been shipped. Like, everyone has been waiting for ages for the (laughs) second one to get shipped. Like, it was well known that it was going to get shipped, like, later on in the season. Everyone knew that, but everyone's just been hounding them, like, when is it? When are you doing it? And I think... (laughs) I've just been seeing a few posts now on, like, a couple of the pages that I'm on, like, they're, they're finally being sent, so... Got it, I missed it. I'm hoping one of them wants to sell it because I think I'll be trying to cop a, probably a double XL because you said they're tight, eh? Yeah, man. I got the 2X and it fits me like perfect. It, it fits like an XL like we're used to wearing. Um, yeah, so, I'll yeah, be wanting... Um, do cop one, yeah. 2X. 2XL, obviously, to like wear the hoodie under it, you know, hoodie top over it is what we're thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, not, not yeah, to go yeah, such yeah, but I thought I'll just. Yeah, that's. Nah, it's... She long gone. I'm going to have to hope that someone sold sold it. Or sat yeah, to... Jump in those forums, man. Jump in those forums. They, they, they're <laughs> some sick jerseys, bro. There's, there's some sick jerseys yeah. out there. But that's it. That's my wrap up of this Tigers game. Well done, Sharks. You, you really proved it. Uh, up to you if you want to carry on or move on to the next game. I just wanted to quickly talk about the Coruscant sin bin. Do you think there was a sin bin, or do you think Trindle shifted that way? Yeah, I think he kind of shifted. I don't think, like for me, I don't think it's a sin bin. But uh, and I've seen Warriors players go for less. <laughs> <laughs> to that, yeah, no, that was all I wanted to say because yeah, I was the same. I thought Trindle kind of made it worse than what it was like if he didn't move i thought they were yeah. in line but hey look man smart play on trindle's part and up he he had to know like in their situation and because of what had happened he kind of didn't have a choice the ref didn't have no choice if he was going to pull that up it was always going to be 10 in the bin he did was it harsh core i don't know but letter of the law man it's kind of always been you know, sim bidding. So he's yeah, been on cr- the back end of a few hard calls this year, eh? Like that try that oh sorry, that no try versus the Broncos. <laughs> that was a try, but they called it a no try. Um a few of these sin bins or a few of these penalties just haven't gone his way. Just I think it's just that like he probably would have got those if he was still in a Panthers jersey. I also think that a lot of these calls come with the colour of your jersey. You know, Warriors Ooh, fans are yes. used to it. Tigers fans, they know that a lot of the penalty count this season, I think the the Tigers have a lot of penalties gone against them this season. They're probably one of the most penalised teams in the comp. It's uh, something. Well, don't they have the most, just like, Simbins this year? Something like 14 of them? Yeah, it's crazy. So. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's all I had for the for that one. So let's move on to the next game. Round 19 was played on Saturday. It was the Gold Coast Titans playing at home to their Parramatta Eels at Seabus Super Stadium. Well, what can I say? Titans, getting it done. I told you, these Eels are trash. <laughs> the best thing they did was name uh, Riles as their new coach, and boy, he can't get there soon enough. Because that current interim coach of theirs, Trent Barrett, has got them playing their way into the wooden spoon. <laughs> so Tigers fans I would hope that you are hoping that Trent Barrett stays around for the rest of the year because you might have a chance to get out of there man you don't know but the Titans once again getting it done 
they're starting to take on more of the Hesler, you know, attitude and style. Jaden Campbell, man. We thought he was coming back last week from injury. Hard back a week. Makes the turn this week and boom. I didn't see this from him, eh? Because it feels like, the, you know, he's been playing in the sixth jersey and Loki been killing it. Yeah. He's been pretty good. So that solves, like, the mystery of, right? Because they had those three good fullbacks. Jaden Campbell's one, AJ Brimson's one, and Kinney's the other. At the start of the year, right, they shifted Brimson to center so Jaden Campbell could take over fullback. And it wasn't that Campbell was playing bad. It just was Brimson went missing. Well, not missing. You just didn't notice him. Yeah. Right? And then I think, what, Campbell got injured, Brimson moved back to fullback, and then killed it. You know, and then it was like, well, you can't. Like, he has to stay there now, right? Well, obviously, a few more injuries would happen, and then somehow Campbell finds himself in, in the six. I think Brimson's not even in the team, and then Kenny goes to fullback, and then Kenny kills it. Jaden kills it. So it's like, are we back to play Brimson at center again? No, nah, like, I think that experiment is over. I, I saw an interview that um, Dez is like, oh, no matter what happens, AJ's not going back to center. He's just like, unless we're really thin with centers, he goes, he he just doesn't work at the center. He just, he, he's not effective. Yeah. Well, then where, where do you put him then? That is the question going forward. Uh how much minutes did he play in this game? But look, Titans got it done. You know, Campereda got a double, kick things started. I mean, they got off to a hot start, these Titans, you know. Three tries in the first 20 minutes. Pretty much game, set, match. The Eels, you know, got one back. But then Kelly responds after halftime, and Will Pizzini Gutho got two like late constellations, but it was pretty much over quite dominant from them and yeah let me i'm just gonna have a quick look where did he play where's the Who? team stats brimson where did he end up playing i uh, think he come off the bench oh, he come off the bench 52 minutes yeah wait did or did keanu kinney come off the bench and no nah, i yeah. think brimo started at fullback and then Oh, the Kenny finish it off. Off the interchange. Interesting. Yeah, and then we've got Sami must have played in the centre. Furthermore, moves to second row. Wow, there's yeah, so much did. movement in this team. This this team list so is much, so it's, messy. It's annoying, eh? It's annoying. So Haas come off the interchange. Like... Boyd become 18th man. Yeah, it just looks Random. all over the place. But it is all over the place. They got the job done. That's all <laughs> I know. So, great victory for the Titans again. You know, they got the return of Brimson now, who's slowly making his way back in. Jaden Campbell's there. Kenny's still playing good. Kieran Foran's turned back the clock. They're starting to click, man. Fafita, doing Fafita things. You know, just give him early ball. He'll do the rest. Uh... All this without, you know, nine year tenor. <laughs> uh, Fotueka was not there as well. Origin Judy. You have to be proud of the boys, man. And to be fair, we kind of always knew they were going to win this game because Moses is, isn't there for the Eels. Guffo as well. I just, Dylan Brown again. Don't want to be critical of the brother. But you're meant to step up, you know. You're, you're meant <laughs> to go up, man. I don't know what's happened to you him this year. Something hasn't clicked. Because last year he was doing good. He's just, I don't know. You're not doing, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether he needs a change of scenery or something. Hey, maybe. Maybe he could be going places. You never know. Because it's just this year I've just haven't liked what I've seen from Dylan Brown. Blaze Talangi. Yeah, that whole team just needs. We wins. We haven't done the Eels, right? 
Nah, GM. they want you to give the nah. Knights treatment, blow up the roster, do what I did. I don't know, man, but they might have to be coming up soon in this GM mode. I don't know if you want them or if I'm taking them, but I want to see what happens because this team's all up to whack, man. Haven't been the same <laughs> since they got smoked in that final, you know, since they were, uh, since James Fisher Harris pretty much made them, you know, Penrith of Sons. You know what I mean? It's just, it's yeah. been all bad since then. But the Titans, great win. Eels, get better. Use a shit. Uh, if you got anything <laughs> to add, man, feel free to add it, but I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, look, nah, there's nothing more to add except um, that that's exactly how I thought that game was going to go. I backed the Eels to win that one, and they didn't let me down. They're there. They've got a chance to make the eight. They just got to keep these wheels turning. Uh, if they keep performing the way they did, they'll they'll make an eight. I reckon they can, man. They, they, they've made a few upsets this season. They, they've beaten some teams that they definitely shouldn't have. We're talking about the Titans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about the Eels. I was like, ain't hey, no, nah, Oh, no, 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 no. No chance. No chance. Um, we'll also talk about another team with no chance of making the eight. And that's my Brisbane Broncos, uh, who dropped another game this weekend uh, to the Dragons at home, 26-30. It has now been two months since I've seen the Broncos win. It's been five games, six games, I think now, six games in a row that they've lost. See, so many I've lost count. Um there's a stat saying no team has ever won a grand final after losing five straight games in the season. Although the Melbourne Storm and the Brisbane Broncos, the 2006 Broncos, managed to win a grand final after losing five consecutive games within a season. So there is that. The Broncos are known. However, not this team. Not these Broncos. Ezra Mam again has shown why he's not that guy worth $800,000. Uh, season. I think they definitely re-signed him prematurely. Not happy about that. We There's plenty more sixes out in the market that, you know, could do a much better job uh, in the absence of your marquee seven. We need players that can step up. Like, look at Tamita Martin. We let him go. And when uh, their seven went down, he stepped up. Owls, on the other hand, just stepped out. Um, he just has gone missing in these few months. Uh, who has still stepped up, though? I think we need we do need to look at some positives. As, as a Bronco, like, I've, I've been tearing them down week after week for the past two months just because of how pathetic their performances have been. So let's look at some positives in amongst this. The positives are that it took until, what, the 54th minute before they decided, shit, let's, let's try to get back into this game. You know, too little, too damn late. Is what I've got to say about that. Um, Katoni Staggs, defensively and offensively, he's definitely a cog in this system that we need to look to retain for the foreseeable future. I know a lot of us want to see um, Sawan Cobo stay just because of his strike rate, but you got to look at the intangibles. I think um, Katoni Staggs has a lot of those intangibles that you can't quantify because they're not seen. He's just a lot of better defensively, and I think that's something that we need to build around moving forward. Um, Blake Moser showed us why he should be the starting hooker, uh, and there's a certain Walters that should be relegated to either a bench spot or the reserve grade for a little bit. Just, you know, find that find that mana again. Like I'm not saying Billy Walters is trash, but I'm, I'm just saying is he's not working currently. Uh, our attack looked stagnant when he was on the field with him off the field and Blake Moser on uh, we, we were humming man like he's just got something electric about him he matches the intensity that Reese Walsh brings uh, it's definitely you know something to look forward to in the future but I don't know how long he'll stick around for to be honest because I know Kevy ain't picking him unless he absolutely has to and when he doesn't absolutely have to like this week I guarantee we're not seeing Blake Moser anywhere near the bench he'll probably be 19th 20th on the roster we'll see Patrick Carrigan come back to 13, Smoothie move back to the bench Billy keep his 9 jumper Payne will return in that 10 jumper moving um, 
Oh, shucks. What's his name? I can't even remember. Uh, Xavier, back to the bench. You know, Pia Kura had a, an okay game, I guess. He had a couple of good hits. Jordan Ricky played all right. He hasn't had a good season this year, I thought, Jordan Ricky Last year, he was on form, man. He was playing outstanding. He was scoring tries almost every other week. You know, his attack prowess was there. This season, not so much. And um, I'm just wondering, is that just because our halves aren't there? Because... Jordan plays on the same side as Adam. And so I think, you know, a lot of those opportunities have gone yeah. in the absence of Adam. But there's one player that, that manages to make opportunities for himself on that edge, and that has been Dean Mariner on the wing. So Dean Mariner in the center, again, why why do we do that to him? And it shows. The past two games, Dean's been playing in the centers. He's scored zero tries. Put him back out on the wing. He scores a bunch more tries, and I don't know why. And I'm hoping that you know when Cobo comes back, um, that Mariner gets put back to the wing and Corey Oates gets put back on I don't know reserve grade somewhere um, in the Caribbean or something like that. I just yeah, he's just not he's not doing it. We're not winning with him on the team. We're not. It wouldn't hurt not to pick some of these players in the absence of our great ones. You know what I mean? Like. They're not performing when they're not there, so why do we back them week after week? Why do you keep picking them? And we go to Newcastle this, what, Saturday? I think we have Saturday night game. I think this is the team they roll out again. I don't know. Mm. Like, depends on how well the boys pull up after tomorrow night's game. I think this is the exact same team that rolls out next week. And this is the exact same result that we're going to roll out next week. You know what I mean? And we actually need to win every game from here on out to make it into the eight. And we re- we need to rely on a lot of teams to drop their games as we go through this period of pushing through to the eight. But, um, you know, I don't see that happening. Especially not after tonight's, well, not tonight, sorry, after Saturday night's performance. I don't see it happening. I see Broncos missing the eight. And I think if they miss the eight, I think it's time for Kevin to go. He hasn't done anything to this team. I don't think his coaching style fits this team. Like, what has he done? He's selected the same players that don't show up week after week. How, How do you expect to win games if you don't do anything different? How do you expect to win games if the players that you're picking aren't able to perform in the positions you'll pick them in. You know what I mean? We talked about AJ Brimson going missing when he was at the Titans when he had to play centre. We've just moved the like our leading try scorer from the wing into centre, and now he's he's not even leading the NRL in try scoring anymore. <laughs> he was. He was two weeks ago he was leading the try scorers in the NRL. And he hadn't scored a four piece. Yeah. Other other people that are catching up to him have scored a four piece. He hasn't. Uh, not discrediting the Dragons at all. They played outstandingly. Uh, it, it hurts because the Dragons are kind of been my my adopted team this season. It hurts to see them beat us, but um, you know, look, it couldn't have happened to a better team. Uh, big ups to the Dragons, and like I said uh, in the preview show, Dragons definitely win this one. They've got a lot of momentum at the moment, and they've managed to pick up all the wins in these origin periods against teams that you know if they're not having the buy they're they're winning these games and yeah full credit to the team over there and to flanagan he's he's done some wonders with this dragon squad who earlier on in the season everyone wrote off everyone said they're pretty much the sure thing for a wooden spoon i think you and i both said tigers probably because we didn't really have a gauge on any of the other teams um but i i had more hope and belief that the dragons wouldn't win the spoon so um yeah, it's good to see them not winning the spoon. That's all I've got to say, really. Um, there's not much positive you can say about this Broncos team. I do I do hear rumours that Sailors are either off to Hull FC or St. Helens next season. Um, yeah, like... I don't even know if I want to talk about your game. You pretty much did it all. And fair enough, that is your team. You know, you must be going through some pain. You know, the, the highs and lows, right, of supporting one team, right? You go from being in the finals and you have some of the best players in the world in your team, you know, 
I'd say some of the best players in their position in their team. So when you know what the team's capable of and how they should be going and they're just not, it's just tough. It's tough. So I'm not going to bash them. I'm just going to leave that there. But uh, I mean, I did pick them to win. I, I really thought at some point it would turn around. And it just hasn't. It just hasn't. I think we're at least two, three weeks away from it happening. Yeah. By then it's too little too late. Exactly. Yeah. So now going to the final game of round 19, your Sunday afternoon game. It was the Manly Sea Eagles at the Knights at Four Pines Park in Sydney. And boy, this was pretty (laughs) one-sided. The Eels, or the Eels, the Sea Eagles just dominant. Dominant from the beginning, dominant all the way throughout. I don't even know what to say. But like, the Knights, once again, they have games like this, which is why they're frustrating. Alright? Because they have good games, then they have games like this. <laughs> and you just knew, I can't see it coming. You know? Yeah. Like, this? 44-6? It's a hiding, mate. You know, Tom Tom Chirovich obviously returns to fullback after his first game back due to an injury. And he looked good. I didn't even know who this Jamie Humphreys guys was. <laughs> I think I remember on the uh, preview show, I was like, who's this cat? Never heard of you in my life. You know? And he looked good. You know, Tommy Talau got his try. Olukawatu, you know, got his try. Lehi Hopawari, who I think was the other winger, got himself a double. So it was just dominant all around. I don't even, even know what you do for the Knights. Like, can't even take any positive. It was just a hiding. An absolute hiding. Manly, dominant victory. You know, without two of the origin players, you know, DCE, Jake. No, man. And they're, they're low-key annoying, Manly, because... This puts them seventh on the ladder, right? And they are only one point behind us, you know, because of the tie they had with the Waz. But they actually have a buy left. We don't. So us and the Dolphins, we've used up our three. In fact, the Seagulls still have a buy. Cowboys still have a buy. Roosters and Sharks both still have buys. Now, the Roosters have the far superior differential against the Sharks because they're both on the same points. But Manly, they actually have a better differential than us, which is low-key annoying because of the stupid Knights. You couldn't have lost by, like, 10. <laughs> 44 to 6, are you shitting me? 38? I said I want to take shots at the Tigers, but I will. How are you going to lose fucking 50-something to six, <laughs> brother? Like, I already knew you were going to lose. I was hoping you would pull it off, because obviously if you won, we would drop into the top four. But the fucker get smoked by pretty much 50. That's GG's in the chat. Like, their points differential, right? The Sharks, their points differential is currently 125. Ooh. If we take off that one game... From the stupid Tigers, the differential would have been like 75, right? I'm just taking 50, just a nice round number. Our differential 65 means we would, they would only be ahead of us by 10 points. Because they dropped fucking beat them by 50, they've pretty much doubled our points differential. Why am I like saying it so mad? Because that pretty much ends our chances of getting top four is why I'm mad. And then the freaking Knights want to get smoked by Seagulls. So now, after their buy, they're going to jump us. So now we go from fifth to sixth. Super annoying. Uh, I think because we got a better, yeah, Cowboys differential is one. So even with the buy, we, we'll still be ahead of them. Uber frustrating, man. Knights, you're not boys. I mean, one, you already weren't, boys. But fucking 44 to 6, you son of a bitches. You kidding me? (laughs) 
Fuck it out. Was not happy at this game, but got to give it to Manly. They absolutely smoked them. Dominant. Oh, I don't really have much else to say, to be honest. But you, do you got anything else to say about this game, man? Not happy is all I know. Nah, look, uh, this game, yeah, like like you said, took me by surprise as well, and I wasn't too sure which way to take it. Uh, I guess this is the way they want to take it, but um, yeah, we both said in the preview show whose team will step up in the absence of their Origin Stars. The Knights lost what looks like two key players, and uh, who would have thought two centres would be the, well, and a fullback, but that fullback hasn't been there most of the season. Um, so we'll just go with two centres makes this team. With those two centres gone, they straight off. And we kind of did see that, though. When um, Best went out for a while, and it was just gay guy, they, they did struggle to get a few wins here and there. So it makes sense that they weren't able to get this job done. We see um, Tom Travoyevich coming back and supporting Tommy Turbo, a.k.a. Tommy Talal, a.k.a. Tommy Tizzle. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I love, I love Tommy Tizzle. He my guy, Tommy T. Um, it, was, it was good to see. And, you know, Jamie Humphreys, what a debut. What a debut. First game of your career, you score a try. You, you absolutely slap the Knights, 44-6. You have been noted, Mr. Humphreys. Uh, I will be looking at you mm -hmm. for any particular rebuilds. I know um, in our fantasy land, the Eels are looking for a seven because <laughs> they sent theirs to Broncos. So fantasy land, they could be looking for a young upstart player like you to sort of steady the ship. Uh, but yeah, look, it was just an absolute hiding, and there's definitely something to look forward to. Uh, Josh Aloye, he's been given a contract renewal away with the with the Seagulls. I seen that the other week. Interesting. Yeah, yeah so they re-upped him. He's coming back. Uh, but yeah, other than that, look, nothing more to say. I think that scoreboard says it all, and you know, Knights fans. This is what you get from your current team. Look at what I can provide with my team. You know, that, that's potential there. Just ah, smells like potential, Fano. Smells like potential, you know. they got reliable players in there. Yes, most of them won't even be playing because they'll all be at Origin. But hey, irrelevant. They still, we, we would have had the buy anyway. Trust me, we would have had the buy. <laughs> but no. That's, yeah, shocking performance from the Knights and, yeah, inches them a little bit further away from the championship trophy. Let's take a quick look at the ladder before we dive into our team of the week because we just want to see where everyone's shaping up. Remember, our power rankings don't change this week, so we just give that a buy round. Because of the buy round, it's hard to move teams up and down when they're not all playing. So let's check out the ladder after 19 rounds. So we've got Melbourne at first, Panthers second, Roosters third, Sharks fourth, Bulldogs in at fifth, Dolphins at sixth, Seagulls at seventh, Cowboys at eighth, Dragons moved up to ninth, Knights down to tenth, Raiders into eleventh, Warriors up to twelfth, Broncos all the way down at thirteenth, and we are, well, we're pretty healthy above the Titans, as long as we score the same amount of points as the Titans. As soon as the Titans score more points, obviously, they jump us. But we got the plus and minus on them because of those few hidings they got at the start of the season. Uh, and at 15th is the Bunnies. And then we've got the Eels and Tigers running out their bottom. Are the Eels and Tigers on the same amount of points? They are. It's the points. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> that points differential for the Tigers, man. Ouch. Idiots. Oh, 203. Damn, the Broncos are the only team in the bottom, what, 17 that are in a positive um, <laughs> plus and minus. We've got more, pos more plus and minus than the Cowboys, and we still in the bottom. <laughs> that's, how, like, that's how good we were at the start of the year and how shit we are now. We had a positive plus and minus, and now we just lost so many games that it's just, it's laughable. It really is. It's, it's laughable. Pathetic. This team, pathetic. Uh, do the Titans still have two buys? Because the Broncos still have one more. 
Because we got nah, three. every team will only have. Oh, yeah. There's a few teams that um have one buyer left, or like you know have two buyers. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But okay. it's one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, most of them actually. Sharks, eels, and the dragons next week have the buy. It's a much needed buy for the eels. They can relax as they get two points on the board, and potentially that two points might. Do the tigers? Tigers still have one more buy too, eh? Yes, the tigers and the eels both still have a buy left. Yep. All right. Well, look, the the. The Eels just need to make sure that they don't get blown out in every game from now moving forward. Um, Bro, that will be them. I just quickly looked at the rounds as I was hoping they would play each other, and they do. Round 27, way. it's for Tigers against Eels. They might be Wooden Spoon. The game for the <laughs> Wooden Spoon, it might be. If everything stays the same, hopefully they go in there with the same amount of points. Loser gets the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> ouch. That's all I got to say is ouch. Um, oh. Let's dive here real quick. The power rankings are as follows. Um, and again, nothing changed from last week. So if you listened last week, you can just press forward on the 10, 15 seconds and uh, you'll be right back where you need to but if you need a refresher it goes like this at one we've got melbourne storm sydney roosters at two panthers at three bulldogs at four seagulls at five dolphins at six titans at seven cowboys at eight rabbitos at nine sharks at 10 warriors at 11 knights at 12 dragons at 13 broncos at 14 raiders at 15 tigers at 16 eels at 17 and that is your power ranking for round 19 again we don't do any changes to that because there are too many buys and it just makes it unfair making people jump for no reason because when you're on a buy you don't um move so that's why we did it that particular way now moving over to the practice runs team of the week this week brought to you by w zelezniak watches we don't actually have any but we'd love to get sponsored by w zelezniak watches they are some fine time pieces i know too it feels some other way about them but hey have you actually seen those watches they are beautiful looking watches man and we ain't going to ever get sponsored by rolex so it is what it is but w zelezniak watches go check out their instagram they have some amazing time pieces you might have just missed their um dylan watson is a lesniak 200 game watch that was called the dwz 200 it was a commemorative watch there was only x amount of them um, ever produced they're all um numbered one through to however many and yeah a few of them were given to all of the boys on the team and then he had two to give away and then the rest were all sold and they sold out really quick and it was like a 600 hundred dollar watch man i know that's probably like cheap to some of you watch people but hey when you're broke like us humble beginnings <laughs> minimum wage two plus two don't know how to live without paycheck to paycheck um that, that's where we at in life but anyway this is the practice runs team of the week uh do you want to do the forwards i'll do the backs yep all right here we go so fullback wing wing center center five eight halfback is how we're going to go i've got trey fuller jack bostock ronaldo mulitalo katoni staggs herbie farwood Jaden Campbell and Braden Tindall. Trindle. <laughs> <laughs> to the forward packs we go at number eight with Regis Campbell. Gillard and he has partnered up with Tavita Panga Jr. At nine is Jacob Little. Your second rowers are Britton Nukura and Jaden Sawyer. And at 13 we have Cam McInnes. And that is your team of the week sponsored by that average looking watch company. <laughs> W Zilla's neck watches. Come on, man. We've got, we've got to sell it. So that way they can. I'm selling shit. Us, man. We need some sponsors. We, Fuck we, them. We need, we need sponsors, man. We're going to be marketable. But uh, we need it, man. We need it. We need to get these lights I'm on. not we wearing it. To... We'll just be hanging over here somewhere. Just like hanging up. <laughs> See, man, when we get good sponsors, we can upgrade our gear. We can get you a better camera. Shit. We can... We can give you a lapel <laughs> mic, man, so you don't have to have a mic on your face. It's, it's, these are the dreams and hopes we wish for. To be honest, <laughs> I just, I just want one day where we get sponsored, so we can give away free tickets to like games and stuff. Like, imagine if we get to this time in a career where we can have the show, and as part of the show, we do a giveaway for the fans, and it's 
flights, accommodation, tickets for four to the grand final or to game two, state of origin or to magic round or to the opening round in Las Vegas. Like that, that's where we, we, we got to get this show. But before we get there, we got to reach episode 50. And Fano, we are four episodes away from episode 50. Jim. How good is that? This this current episode, I just got to double check, is, yeah, so so this is episode 46. We are four episodes away from reaching episode 50, which is a huge milestone for us. Yes. Because like we said, the, the name is called The Practice Run. And we, we were legit just practice running all of the summer. Like through Christmas to New Year, we were trying to practice run the whole time. And when we finally got a practice run, we kind of just rolled with it and we just uploaded those. And, you know, from then, from those, those were humble beginnings. Yeah. Up until now, I feel like we, we, we've developed a bit of chemistry and a bit of a bit of a show that you guys can um, really attach to. And it feels feels somewhat polished, not quite polished, but we, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. And it's uh, because of you guys that we can. We're able to do this. So thank you all. I think that's it from me, brother. I think I'm going to hand it over to you. you. You wrap us up. You close us out for episode 46 as we get the countdown going for episode 50. So make sure you all tune back in for episode 50 at the final. But I'm going to hand it over to two for the final word. Yes, man. I can't believe we've come so far. 46 episode deeps, four to the big 50, and hopefully many more to come. Yes. As always, thank we would love to shout out to those who are supporting us, both near and far. We really do appreciate support, especially if you've been with us since the start, you know, humble beginnings. You wait, we're going to crack it. We're going to will this thing into existence. Just watch what we do. And when we do, you know, we won't be forgetting about those day ones that were there from us in the beginning. You know, those try to jump on the bandwagons, we'll take note. You're more than welcome to jump on the bandwagons, but, you know, you don't forget your day one fans, and we really do support it. But we're going to leave it there. We will see you on our next episode Thursday, where I believe we will be doing our... It's the slightly long episode, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a long one for us, because it's, it's Origin. <laughs> yeah, Origin. Recap, yeah. And then Round 20 preview, including our Origin Game 3 team of the the game and then we, we might even do a team of the series team and the try series, to eh? down into yeah. um just our overall man of the series yeah yeah so thursday episode is either going to be really really fun or really really sad <laughs> <laughs> We don't know which way it's going to be. We're hoping it's going to be, you know, the vibes are going to be on. But if the vibes aren't on, we'll still be there either way, you know, talking about the scan that we love, the NRL. Until then, though, we'll leave you on that note. We will see you on Thursday. Until then, stay safe. Cheers to the church. Matewa.